Good day to all of you. Thank you so much for coming by today. As you can see, we have not the normal kind of fishing trip for us. And let me tell you here, this is 30 years in the making. I've been waiting my entire adult life to come float one of these rivers in northern Wisconsin like this. And we are with none other than Chris Willen, the guide extraordinaire <laughs> from Tennessee to up here in the North Woods. Chris, thanks for so much for having Robbie and I out to do this. Let's hear about it. Absolutely, man. It's good to have you guys back. We tried to do it in Tennessee and didn't have great conditions, so it's good to have you in the Northwoods. And I'm going to go down this river today. We got a little bit of sun, but fish have been moving pretty good. Uh, you know, this time of year we got to be careful of the water temps and stuff, but what's nice about the river is it never gets super, super hot. So, sure. Um, you know, bucktails, topwater stuff, and See what we can get done, buddy. I've got topwaters. I've heard that. Let's not waste another second and get on this float trip. You, you do have that. Oh, I got a small jaw. All right, first fish. First fish hooked up. I am hooked up on Mr. Small Jaw on the chopper. Oh, yeah. Look at that river, river rascal. Look at that dude. Wow. Oh, now I got him. <laughs> now he's, yeah, this guy's going to put a hook in me if I'm not careful. There we go. First fish of the trip. This is the kind that'll put a hook in you. He has not fought at all, and he's got treble hooks everywhere. All right, nice small jaw on the board on the chopper we'll take that look how dark he is wow Fatty. cool crawfish you do oh yeah yeah it looks like spawn and that's not spawn <laughs> very cool all right now it's going to get easy Right, to start off the day, I will be throwing a TNA Angry Dragon. This is actually the smaller side size. Uh, this is the eight incher, perfect for a little river. We're just gonna float along and uh, enjoy the day. A lot of cool scenery. Definitely some awesome, awesome water. Lee's chucking a Poseidon back there. This is a little deeper stretch of the river. And we are looking for a big green ski. Yeah, Chris says throw that white swim bait through this deeper section. That was his first choice. So that is my first choice currently, rolling the Poseidon. Uh, do you ever get him at both side on these swim baits? Or? Oh yeah. That's sure. what I want to happen. That's what I'm looking for right now. Just a boat side come out of nowhere, big, long, green, shiny, with a bucket full of teeth. Oh, you're open. Oh, it is really small. <laughs> wow. It is a musky. First, I'm falling, okay. How'd that go for you? It was still on the bait, but you know what? I don't think we want to make that one smart because they get big here. Um, yeah, that was like an uh, 18 incher. So hey, that's all right. Uh, it, it was interested in the, in the, in the chatter bait. I almost died. I would have I been gone down the river in the rapids here. here. But uh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Too. Gosh, he just took the a swipe night. at this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Doggone it. Get my bait out of the water here. Now tell me, this doesn't look like one of the most badass spots on this stretch of river. Is that accurate? It's definitely one of them, you know, we got these big massive eddies that, you know, break right below these big rapids here. So you've got, you know, high oxygenated stuff here and then stuff where they can get off the treadmill over here and hang out. So perfect summertime know, musky haunt. It's a good spot to uh, run into one, hopefully. For those of you unfamiliar with river fishing, basically you have your riffles, holes and runs. And basically, you know, tell us the difference between those. Well, you know, you got your kind of riffly, rapidy stuff up here, which is going to be your highly oxygenated areas and stuff like that. And 
your holes are just going to be your deeper areas where you know they've got a little bit more ceiling a lot of this river is pretty shallow you know a sub four feet so some of the holes seven eight feet where they can kind of hang out get out of the current and hunt hunt some bait Here you go, here you go. Got one? Yep, 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 yep. Come on, come on. Come fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. Wow. Yeah, that was definitely a fish. Oh yeah. Like a 36, 37 incher. Nice. First real follow of the day. Man, he turned on it. He like was way far behind and then it got closer to it. Little single aid bucktail. Come on. What a cool spot. So the fact that we haven't caught one yet, Chris, I don't really give a crap because this is <laughs> sick. This is the coolest trip down a river I have ever made. What? Uh, so I know you've got like this crazy schedule, like you live in two different places, right? Right. And you're down south part of the year and you're up here part of the year. And uh, you just kind of you have two different trailers. You kind of bounce back and forth between. That's right, <laughs> dude. You're that you're living the life. The musky gypsy. How much? How much is your house right now? <laughs> My lack of house. <laughs> <laughs> My house that I don't have. More uh, two boats, no house. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty smart. No big giant house payments. Living in the city. Uh, no big you know giant fancy boat. This, I mean, this you talk about stripped down and just fishing cool waters. This is what it's pretty much about. Pretty much get up here the, the last weekend in May when musky season opens and ride it out until the second week in November. Really? Uh, when it gets that late? Super cold. Wow. And not, That's insane. Yeah, it's it, it gets tough and it's, you know, shorter days and you really pick your windows and stuff, but that time of the year on the river can be pretty phenomenal. And then uh, I'll go home and, and see the family for turkey day and stuff. And I'll head down just south of Nashville and, and get everything rolling down there through December. And, um, you know, we usually, they start spawning around mid to end of March. And we, you know, I'll leave them alone for that and pretty much done and take a little break and then head up here. Well, let's take a look at some of those sick fish you've caught out of this skinny water. So if you think you've done everything musky fishing, and you haven't done this, what are you thinking? You have to come to do this. This is just, what an opportunity to not see a boat, to fish skinny water muskies. Everything is less than pretty much three feet of water, it seemed pretty much, you know, around here. Yeah, a lot of it's really shallow. You know, you get into some deeper holes and stuff like that, but the shallow water game is kind of the whole part of the river. And, you know, they do different things when there's not a lot of space for them to go so they only go up when you hook them <laughs> yeah a lot of a lot of acrobatic fish so yeah these uh these river fish are built a little different than the lake fish they're not quite as gutted out and stuff and they're just solid muscle and just they're mean man i mean they're get some drag pulled on you and and jump and it's uh it's a different experience for sure by the sounds of it we have about one more mile water so we're unfortunately at the end. I keep asking them to roll us back up so we can do it again. <laughs> Apparently that's not an option here. So we'll just keep beating it up till we get to the end of the run here. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we have what we call the bottom of the ninth fish, you know, and just like on the lake or anywhere else, that last spot that we, that we drift down to could be the one of the day. And there's finally a cloud. I see a cloud. Yeah, there's, <laughs> we might get a little bit of shade at some point. Well, at this point, you could probably tell we unfortunately did not bag no, a muskie. No muskies on this float, but it uh, doesn't mean you can't go out tomorrow and get three, you know. It's you like, never know. You never yeah. know. All right, Robbie and Lee, couldn't get one with you guys, but my man Bernie just got one on the chopper. Check out this river fatty. Guide Chris Willing for you. Nice Fat fish, buddy. 38 inch on the chopper, top water. Going along and it just crushed it like it should. Lee Robbie, number two, water chopper, 
44. Here's the chopper. Had to just completely cut every hook out of it. Man, we needed a little rain, boys. We got a little rain and the fish bit. Well, that's what's cool about it, though. I was telling Lee yesterday and today have been the two worst days of my whole season. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we, we brought that for him. Yeah, yep. Wow. Basically, when you put cameras on a, on, on a water, it, you never know what's going to happen. Certainly, probably the biggest front we've had in how long? Just blew through yeah, yesterday. Yep. So, yeah, kind of tough cool. conditions. It's still. One of the coolest, I don't know, fishing trips I've ever been on. The oh, first yeah. float trip I've ever been on, so it, it was super cool, super cool. You could cool. just offer tour guides just to float right. down just this Just to look at this That's stuff, yeah. So cool. Yeah. Boat rides. If you guys would want to come out on a nice river float adventure. I'm and gonna, you do want to. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely do that. Um, I will leave all the links in the description below so you can get out with Chris. For doing a trip like this, Chris Willen is your man. Make sure you put that on your bucket list for river muskies extraordinaire thank you guys so much for watching uh this little adventure we were on to minnesota and now northern wisconsin we are on our way home hopefully we make it home safely <laughs> yeah mashed potatoes it's, has yeah seven. it's gonna be a brutal ride thank you guys see you next time